Hey guys, it's Jack Jack and welcome back to my channel. So in today's video, I'm doing a get ready with me but with a twist. This new series is 100% inspired by Murder Mystery Makeup Mondays with Bailey Sarian and also Makeup and Movies from Jamie French. Except the only difference is this isn't going to be a weekly thing on my channel. Like I, I already know this is not going to be a weekly thing on my channel. Maybe like a monthly thing and I'm also not uploading these on Mondays. Um, and I'm not going to talk about murder mysteries or movies. But instead I wanted to do a get ready with me where I do my makeup because I love makeup, but I also talk about a different character from the Bible or just a different story from the Bible, so I think this is going to be really fun. So to kick off this series, it doesn't even have a name, this series doesn't even have a name, but to kick this whole series off, we are going to start with Jonah. So if you want to find out more of who this Jonah guy is and what his whole story is and also watch me do my makeup, then just keep watching. Also, you guys know I love doing inspired makeup looks, so today's makeup look that I am going to try and recreate is from the beautiful Katy Perry, this picture right here from American Idol. She's got like um, a very like just peachy shimmery lid, but she has like blue wing liner and then it looks like purple lower lash lines. So I thought that'd be really fun. So that's the look I'm gonna try and do today. And I will leave all the makeup that I use in the description box for you guys if you're interested. But without further ado, let's go ahead and get started with the story of Jonah. This is like nerve wracking because I don't think I'm very good at multitasking, but um, Jonah, he has his own book in the Old Testament. He is considered a minor prophet mainly because his book in the Bible is so short. It's only four chapters. So it's a very short book. You might have skipped through it. You might have passed it. You might have never even seen it or never even knew that there was a book called Jonah in the Bible because it's really little. But don't let that fool you because there's a lot to dive into with just four chapters. So this story begins with Jonah receiving a command from the Lord. So the Lord told Jonah, go to the great city of Nineveh and preach against it because they're very sinful i've seen their wickedness their wickedness like it's a bad city so go preach against them and tell them that i'm gonna destroy i'm gonna destroy their city because they're so bad so go tell them that and jonah being a man of god being a prophet and all that receiving a word directly from the lord what does he do he runs the other way he does not want to do what God has called him to do. And we'll get more into that in a minute, but he just was not into it. Um, the city of Nineveh is found in Assyria, which happened to be Israel's like biggest enemy. Like they were enemies, they did not get along. There was lots of persecution and Nineveh was very like violent and brutal towards them. And they were also a very pagan city. So um, a lot of times that meant like worshiping multiple gods or you know whatever it may be but basically the city of Nineveh just did everything the opposite of what God wants and what God's people do so anyways back to Jonah he receives this command from the Lord and he goes the opposite way to Tarshish 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 I feel like Jim Carrey when I say it. Tarshish <laughs> so Jonah goes like totally the opposite way and he kind of smuggles himself onto a boat. He's on a boat, he's thinking he can hide from God, which really, <laughs> that's funny. So he stows himself away on this boat. He's chilling, taking a nap. He's like, I'm good. I'm just gonna take a nap under this deck. I'm good to go. And then a great storm comes and like violent winds and like it's really rocking this boat. It's a, This boat is about to break. This storm is like intense and all the sailors are freaking out. They're terrified right now. And they're like, oh my gosh, crying out um, to all their different gods because these sailors, that the boat that Jonah jumped onto, these sailors were also pagans. Um, so they were praying to like different gods and they're like, everyone pray to your God to see if like it can stop this and nothing was working, right? They even started like throwing off cargo from the ship to like make it lighter, like lighten the load, I guess. So they're doing all that they can to try and survive this super, super violent storm. This, mind you, was brought to you, brought to you by the Lord, brought to them, I should say, brought to them by the Lord. But they didn't know that and they didn't know why either. And then they, they go below the deck and they see Jonah just peacefully sleeping while all of them are panicking and they're freaking out. And Jonah's just peacefully sleeping under there. 
the sailors are like, how could you possibly be sleeping right now? Like, look at the storm. Get up and pray to whoever your God is and maybe they'll save us. And so Jonah wakes up. And then what it said in the Bible was that they ca they decided to cast lots. And then I read in the message um, translation that they drew straws. <laughs> and so like here, everyone grab a straw. And then Jonah ended up getting the small smallest straw. So they were able to prove that it was Jonah's fault. That's what the message translation said, but in all the other translations it says they cast a lot and realized that it was Jonah who's the reason, who's at fault for all, for this storm and for everything happening. This is all Jonah's fault. They were able to figure that out. So once they were able to put the blame on Jonah, they're like, okay, dude, what the heck? Spill the beans. What's your story? Who even are you? Where are you from? And Jonah says, hi, I'm Jonah. I'm a Hebrew. I worship the Lord the creator of the universe, of heaven and earth. Yep, that's me, nice to meet ya. No, but he like shares his story with them um, so they know like he's running away from God, running away from his calling. And so they hear this and they're like terrified. They're like, oh my gosh, what are we gonna do now? They're like, this isn't good. We are not gonna survive this storm. What on earth are we to do? And Jonah steps in and he's like, why don't you just throw me overboard? And that probably like initially sounds like a, um, like what a courageous sacrifice to do Jonah to just throw yourself overboard for these men. But if you like get to know Jonah's character, it doesn't really seem that way to be honest. It would be like a win-win in Jonah's eyes because the storm would stop for these sailors and then he wouldn't have to worry about his calling or the consequence the consequence for not following through on his calling because he was not interested whatsoever to go to Nineveh and warn them because he Loki hated them because they were enemies of his and they in his mind they deserved to be destroyed they deserved God's punishment and God's wrath he didn't want to save them he didn't want to help them out so he was just not interested so he's like let me just go let me be thrown overboard and it'll save us all the trouble. So he is indeed thrown overboard. But before this happens, I think like this is important to like point out. Um, it's such a small detail and I think it's very easy to read over. But as soon as Jonah offers like, okay, throw me overboard guys. What the sailors do, they don't immediately just throw him overboard. They try and sail as close to the shore or to land as possible for Jonah. They're trying, they don't want they don't want to sacrifice this guy. They don't want to kill him. And so when they realize that they could not sail any closer and like really the only option was to throw Jonah overboard, guess what they started doing? They didn't pray to the gods they were praying to earlier. They were praying to the Lord, God. They were praying to him. But they were like, please Lord, don't let us die because of this. I don't know, I just think it showed those sailors this brush is dirty. I don't know. I think it just showed that those sailors had a lot of compassion and not only compassion, but like immediately they became obedient to God. Like how cool is that? They were pagans before this and through this whole experience, they started praying to the Lord. And then once they, um, you know, they're praying, please don't let us die because of, because of him. Like, we're sorry we have to throw him overboard, please forgive us. They throw Jonah overboard and the storm stopped completely. Like it was calm again. And I think that just like, they were amazed and also had like this great fear at the same time. Like it was just like, whoa, what did we just experience? What did we just go through? But after they threw Jonah overboard, they made a sacrifice, it doesn't say what, but they made a sacrifice and they made vows to God and they became God-fearing men after that. Like, how how amazing is that whole encounter? That that was never Jonah's like plan or intention. Like, Jonah's a very selfish person that we can tell, we can just tell from this book. He's a very selfish person. Um, so he didn't care about these pagan sailors being saved, but from this encounter, they became God-fearing men like I think that's awesome again it's such a small detail and small like verse in the chapter so you could easily read over that but 
I was like, oh, that's so cool. And so Jonah is thrown overboard and he dies. And that's the end of the story. Thank you guys for watching and I'll see you next time. Just kidding. <laughs> he does not die because you know what? God has a great purpose for him and a great plan. Whether Jonah likes it or not, God has something planned for this man. So he's not gonna die. So while Jonah is like, I don't know, I guess like sinking or floating in the ocean, he gets swallowed by a giant whale. Mm -hmm, a giant whale. So Jonah gets swallowed by this giant whale, right? Swallowed whole. He doesn't die. He's still alive. Jonah is still alive after being swallowed by a whale. And he is now in the belly of the whale. Does this sound like a familiar story to you? Does Pinocchio come to mind? I think Pinocchio was heavily inspired by the story of Jonah. But anyways, he's in the belly of the fish for three days and three nights. Which is really cool because this whole part of Jonah being in the whale kind of like like he's dead but he's not dead but like it's kind of representing that like he's in the whale dead just like how Jesus after he was crucified was in the tomb dead for three days and three nights and then rose and resurrected and just in the same way the same thing happens to Jonah um ooh, I'm getting ahead of myself actually so while he's in the belly he is, he starts to pray and praise God, but he's not repenting or asking for forgiveness or anything like that, which is like going through everything that you've gone through, you're being disobedient to God, you are running away from what he's calling you to do, and you cause a great big storm, and you're still not going to repent and ask for forgiveness. Instead, he he's praying and praising God, but kind of almost in a way where he is like accepting his fate like here in the belly of the whale like he's accepting this at least that's how I read it so he does this very like poetic dramatic prayer to God Jonah is quite dramatic <laughs> he is selfish he is stubborn he is dramatic <laughs> you'll see here in a second so now God so great in his mercy right God is just so so good he hears these prayers, right? And he makes the whale, or not whale, the giant fish spit and throw up Jonah onto land. So now Jonah is back. Jonah has resurrected from the dead. That whole encounter, it really does foreshadow because the story of Jonah is in the Old Testament. So this is before the time of Jesus. So this is like way before. But it foreshadows and even Jesus in the book of Matthew, we read in our Bible study, um, that Jesus said there will be no sign except for the one of Jonah, which there you go. He, he resurrected three days and three nights in the belly. Ooh, doing wing liner with a pencil is quite tricky. Tricky, tricky. So now that Jonah is back on land, God now gives him a second chance. He says, Jonah, go to the city of Nineveh and preach against it. This time Jonah obeys and he goes over to Nineveh and his whole like journey to go throughout Nineveh took three days. So pretty big, pretty big space that Jonah is preaching through. But let me tell you what Jonah said going throughout the city. He, this guy just like did not care. So all he does when he goes through Nineveh is he says 40 more days and Nineveh will be thrown over. That was it. No passion, no explanation. That was his sermon. That was his preaching, period. That was it. And I could, I don't know, I could kind of just picture him. He was just not passionate, didn't care. Like, oh, hey, if you wanted to know, 40 more days and the city will be overthrown if you're interested. That's just, that's how I picture Jonah going through the city of Nineveh. But I mean, hey, he did it. At least he didn't try to run away again. He did it. But there was like literally no talk or explanation as to why or like i received a message from the lord or like you guys have been sinful no explanation no like he didn't even tell him what to do like repent and you will be saved he didn't even bother saying that he just said your town's gonna be destroyed in 40 days okay peace out i'm gone now <laughs> freaking jonah man her makeup could have very well been the same color but in the picture it looked like blue and purple so we're just gonna 
keep it like this. So now let's talk about how the people of Nineveh reacted to Jonah's preaching. I'm very impressed with them. I've got to say I'm very impressed because they did not need a lot of enthusiasm. They did not need a long sermon or preaching to inspire them because the moment they heard it and it reached around to the king who heard it, they all decided to repent. They all decided to fast. They, even the king, he took off his royal robes and like fancy clothing and all that and dressed himself in sackcloth, which was the typical thing that people dressed themselves as when they were fasting or repenting. So they all dressed like that. Even the animals, they put sackcloth on their animals and their cows and things like that. And the whole city repented. So the king told all the people, get rid of all your evil ways and call on the Lord and maybe he will have compassion on us. Like the king and just everyone there, they were, they were moved by this little speech from Jonah. And I'm sure that was not the reaction Jonah was expecting, right? Spoiler alert, it wasn't. He was not happy by the response. So the people of Nineveh were fasting, repenting. They were asking for um, compassion from the Lord. And how did God respond? He had compassion on them, of course, because he is just such a merciful God. And so he forgives them and he does not destroy the city of Nineveh. This is just huge because it just showed, you know, again, God's mercy and compassion on people, especially people outside of Israel. like. It wasn't God's original people, the Jews. It was Gentiles. It was people from pagan cities that God still had compassion on them. Like if they repent and they turn from their evil, wicked ways, God wants to have mercy on them. God wants to have compassion on them. And I just think it shows the character of God and how awesome he is. With that being said, how do you think Jonah reacted to that? Jonah, you guys, was just not having it. He was so upset. Like the way that I read it, is like he is it too bright i'm so sorry jonah was throwing like a literal temper tantrum like a little toddler tantrum he was just he was so mad he was so upset he was just so angry and so upset that he started praying and talking to god saying like this is why i tried to flee from you i knew you'd have compassion on them and you'd be slow to anger towards them like the characteristics that he knew God had already like that that's already he already knew that that was God and the reason he fled was because he did not want to see them not be destroyed like he did not want to see God show mercy on them because again Nineveh Assyria that was Israel's enemy and Jonah was like I don't want to protect them those are my enemies so that's why Jonah fled in the first place not because he was like a coward or anything like that um I think the very first time I read this, I think I kind of interpreted it as like Jonah was a coward, but reading it again, like that totally was not the case. Jonah just did not have a lot of compassion in his heart for others, especially others that like were not his people. But yeah, Jonah was just so mad that God showed mercy on his enemies. So he like stormed off, like all grumpy, stormed off to a hill um to kind of watch to see what happens with the city um they were spared and they were fine but jonah was up there watching and he even set up a little shelter for him and he's just like sulking he's so upset and god like god is just so awesome but he provides a little leaf to cover him from the sun like the blazing sun so he's covered and he has some shade and that makes jonah happy he's happy now like oh that felt good like while i'm here getting mad at them like that like Oh, look, this is perfect. <laughs> look at the little leaves. That is some good shade. So then the next day, um, the Lord provides a worm. And this worm eats all the leaves. And it's gone now. And Jonah's back in the blazing heat. And he's like burning. And he's angry. He is furious. Oh, I forgot to say when um, Jonah was like having this kind of conversation with God saying like, this is why I fled in the first place. Like I knew you'd have compassion. Jonah literally said, just take my life now. I'd rather die. Like that's how mad and upset he was and how dramatic Jonah is. So going back now, um, the worm ate his leaf and he is furious and he's like, I'd rather just die. Like that's how upset he is. Like over the fact that he has no leaf covering him anymore. And the Lord says, Jonah, is your anger justified? And Jonah like little temper tantrum. Yes, it is. It is justified. So Jonah being angry at the plant, God says, is it right for you to be angry at this plant, Jonah? But God trying to teach Jonah a lesson 
says you care or you're so concerned about this plant you care so much about this plant that you didn't care for you didn't tend to yet you're so like overly concerned about it but aren't the people of Nineveh more valuable than these leaves how did Jonah respond we do not know because that is where the chapter ends so I guess you can kind of take it from there how you think Jonah would have responded but ultimately God was just trying to teach him a lesson how first of all first of all God is God he can choose who he wants to have mercy on and who he wants to be compassionate on that is all up to him it is not our call we cannot be Jonah and like I didn't want you to forgive them no God God makes the rules but anywho I feel like there is so much we could dive into within the book of Jonah even these short four chapters there's a lot to dive into but to me I think the biggest theme from this story is just God's mercy and love for all people not just the people of Israel but all people his message started with the people of Israel started with the Jews like that was his original people but because of God's grace it has spread through Gentiles it has spread through different nations it has spread to anyone who wants to accept and believe in Jesus Christ like yeah how how compassionate is that doesn't matter if we grew up on the wrong side of town like if we grew up in Nineveh we were a part of the pagan city it doesn't matter if we can repent and accept Jesus God invites us God wants us but I think another big theme in this is also obedience and isn't it funny how the people you know you would think are you know the most obedient to God God's you know God's chosen people um, his own prophet would be the most obedient but we see in the story that the sailors show obedience immediately the people of Nineveh and the king they show obedience immediately and not Jonah like isn't that just so funny let me pop on some lashes real quick lashes are on and we are officially done um, someone outside is playing really loud music I hope you can't hear it but um, that is it for this story I love the story of Jonah I feel like every time I read it I'm taking away something more from the reading or I'm understanding something even more so that's why I always encourage like if you join me on my Bible studies don't think you just read one book in the Bible one time no read it multiple multiple times like always be reading it because you know new things will be revealed to you every time I think the the wiser we become the more that we just grow in our faith when we do read these books again we'll be able to understand even more the next time so I hope you guys enjoyed overall this story was about God's great and loving compassionate mercy that he has for all people and Jonah's stubbornness and we read that and we we like maybe we can laugh at Jonah now but like be be real for a second like how many times have we acted like Jonah when God has called us to do something or how many times have we kind of turned our back on um, people that God wants us to turn forward to like Jonah couldn't accept the fact that God showed mercy to his enemies if you have an enemy if we have enemies how do you feel if God gives them mercy like how is that gonna make you feel are you gonna be angry like Jonah or are we gonna be accepting and welcoming like God wants us to overall may we walk this life willing to forgive others and show mercy and not be judgmental and stubborn like Jonah I hope you guys enjoyed this video um, let me know what you think you know just trying something new I hope you guys enjoyed because I had so much fun filming this and I would love to share more people in the Bible more stories from the Bible um, I love makeup I love Jesus why not combine the two I love God's Word I love learning more of God's Word every day so I get excited talking about different stories and I hope you guys do too should we have a theme song like Bailey oh I know what it could be I say this every time before I eat you can ask Johnny you can ask my family I always do this but I go thank you Jesus thank you Jesus that'll be our little theme song thank you Jesus thank you Jesus <laughs> anyways I will see you guys in the next video bye